Hello everyone and welcome. Make a cup of your favorite drink and get comfortable because this is a wonderful time for new stories from Yellowcat. Send your own stories in the comments below and maybe they'll be in our new video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet and let's get started. What's the silliest mistake you've seen a bad coworker make? Part 5. There were sporadic minor incidents at the Texas fast food chain Whataburger, which is similar to In-N-Out where I used to work, but one particular incident really made me want to quit. At one point, the three guys we had at the deep fryer decided, with their combined two and a half brain cells, that it'd be a good idea to use the majority of the baskets to fry the chicken needed for other orders that weren't being made yet. I had to run food out to customers in the drive through while I was working. Onion rings, which would have been cooking in the deep fryer had those three idiots not used most of the chicken baskets, were the other orders that were waiting on the preparation table. Management had already chastised us for not being able to use the fry baskets. Customers were arriving from the drive through hungry and irate, demanding their food while the three stooges were loitering. Due to the poor design of our driveway, which splits into two lanes that were both fully occupied and the parking lot being full, we were unable to assist people who were behind them. The idiots chose to point the finger at me and accuse me of being incompetent for forgetting to put fries in the bags that didn't require them. I was too busy trying to calm down customers and at least reassure them that their food wouldn't arrive cold, so I was unable to respond. Before everyone received their food and everything was operating smoothly, there was a good hour of shouting. Following everything that had happened, the lone manager approached me and said, I noticed you on the cameras and you were just standing there chatting with customers like, excuse me, I was trying to keep them from eating us alive. Perhaps there shouldn't be three men on a two-man station. Could you perhaps leave the office and go about improving the customer experience as opposed to hiding there? Nevertheless, he threatened to write me up for it. However, when I arrived at work the following day expecting to sign some paperwork, the general manager informed me that he had thrown the paperwork out since he knew I wasn't the type to sit around while we were rushing. Though the rest of the staff sort of treated those three guys differently, they never faced consequences for what they did. It doesn't sound like a big deal when you put it that way, but when dining customers are yelling at you, three guys are blaming you for not doing your job for them, and customers are yelling at you, gets frustrating, especially when the manager says he saw you struggling and chose to lecture you instead of helping when he felt like it. We did Western Union when I worked as a store manager at Kmart. Scammers were calling service desks and pretending to be from IT, security, or some other department. They would then name drop the SM or the DM and ask them to process a Western Union and send thousands of test dollars to some destination. The issue is that as soon as you press that button, the money leaves the store and is transferred to the other location, even if the customer is paid. There was a lot of attention given to it because in southern Wisconsin alone, they had defrauded several retailers out of $50,000. My store had received a call, but the person at the service desk hung up. My longtime employee was an ASM who was utterly incompetent. She was also completely ignorant of technology, particularly Western Union. Even though she had received multiple training sessions, whenever she was up there and someone wanted to send money, she would simply tell them it wasn't working, saving them the trouble. The scam call is answered by one of my service desk girls, who's about 16 at the time. Since she has been trained, she hands the phone to the ASM right away. Because they persisted in doing so, the company has literally begun terminating everyone who's engaged in these activities. It's that serious now. Then, this ASM proceeds to process the $30,000 Western Union scam. Are you sure we're supposed to be doing this? My 16-year-old service desk girl, bless her, repeated to the ASM in whispers. 
Over the phone, we were instructed not to do any of these. The ASM simply responds, well, they said the SM approved it. When she reaches the final screen before you send it, it finally activates for her. When she questions whether she should proceed with this, the person on the phone simply hung up on her. The ASM just unplugs the computer from the wall, having tried everything else, including closing the screen and canceling the order. Even though it was two months later, I demoted her. I worked as a tier one tech support for a hospital right after graduating from college. A coworker who was hired years before me failed out, went to the supply chain department, failed there, and was rehired by my manager two months after I started. She lacked any competence at all, deploying computers without the necessary drivers installed, failing to diagnose basic issues such as a jammed printer queue, and substituting VGA cables for available digital outputs. She was also a lazy A and a complete moron. Took significant amount of time each day to browse her daughter's Facebook page. But because her spouse was disabled, she had a child, and she fit HR's quotas as an underrepresented minority in our company, she was protected from termination. She was incredibly stupid. She had a college degree, but I'm assuming my employer didn't feel the same way about her as the university did. Her only language was English, which she could hardly speak. She candidly admitted that despite receiving a 16 on the ACT, she was awarded a scholarship to the nearby university. ACT scores are at a 36. The worst thing I've ever witnessed her do is neglect to fix a coax cable that provided power and cable TV to a small swing-arm television for patients in the waiting room before surgery. It was simply an exposed wire carrying an electrical charge because it had come loose from its connection. The nurse who submitted the IT ticket even mentioned how surprised she was by it. My colleague merely reattached the cable to the wall connection using packing tape. Fixed connection, seen that TV worked again, was her comment as she closed the ticket. This fix obviously didn't last long because nurses had to move the television to get to the patient because it was attached to a swing arm. That day, the hospital's CEO was undergoing surgery. He was a more senior citizen. After seeing the terrible tape job and trying to fix it, he shocked himself, cried out, and the nurses rushed over, shocked themselves, and pushed his bed with exposed metal into the connection to wheel him out of that patient bay, shocking him further and knocking out television to all 25 patient bays. All because a single woman was too stupid and indolent to cut the coax cable. It's also quite simple. Just Disconnect that bay from the ceiling power unit, cut the cable an inch, prep the end, and add a compressing fitting. The latter removal and reinstallation take up to three of the five minutes required for this fix. It goes without saying that we had to have a lengthy safety incident debriefing. She explains that she didn't want to re-terminate the cable because the last time she attempted to cut one of those cables, it shocked her. I instructed her to unplug it from the power source. She claimed not to know how to accomplish that. The CEO was taken aback by her inability to disconnect the cable. Oh, and I made over $30 per hour. Because she was hired when IT services were outsourced and they honored her old contract, she was the highest paid employee in the department and received annual raises for a decade of incompetence. Despite her actual job being in technology, she was less tech savvy than nurses. Furthermore, nurses are infamously poor techies. When I eventually rose to the position of manager in that department, I deliberately gave her tickets that were clearly part of her job duties, but I knew she couldn't complete in order to report her for failure. I did this until she got discouraged and ended up working for the university during their diversity hiring initiative after a PR issue because HR wouldn't let me fire her. I was penning her articles about twice a month. What kind of negative experience have you had with the homeowners association or bad neighbors part five? I live in a condo with 103 units that's run by an HOA. 
We became friends when a guy moved in six months ago. Not long after moving in, he joined the board, but he's not doing a great job. I've lived here for six years and have always worked to solve problems in the community. I don't want to join the board because I think my high HOA fees each month are enough of a contribution. There are big problems with communication in our building and no one takes responsibility. In case of an emergency, they shut off the water last week for Friday. Since AC units need water to work, I asked on a community forum if we needed to turn them off. They didn't answer, so I told them they were not communicating well. Finally, they said, we don't think we'll have to shut down the whole cold water line or the line that feeds the cooling tower. The HVAC system in both the buildings and each unit should still work. As a safety measure, though, if your unit is affected, you should turn it off while the work is being done. Thank you, I said. When we're not home, how are we supposed to know if our unit is being affected? Because most of us work during the day, we don't want to lose our AC in the middle of summer. My family isn't coming home until tomorrow morning for the whole weekend. Since no one knows which water lines affect which units, should I turn off all the air conditioning and go back to a sauna on Sunday? Should I leave the AC on and hope for the best? I appreciate the board's work, but this guessing game and bad communication can't go on. Since I had to leave the morning of the shutoff, I stopped my HVAC from running without water. I knew it'd be hot when I got home. Other people in the area said their AC units weren't working a day after the power was turned off. Friend got a screenshot of a post from another unit from me with the message, Told you this would happen. Mine's working fine, he said, being a rude jerk. You're not getting it, I told him. It's not about your unit working or me being careful. A lot of people are having trouble communicating even though they're paying the same fees. Turn off your air conditioner while we do this work, the board could have said. Plus, our outside vendor is likely to charge us to flush the lines in each unit. Friend of mine says it's tough because people are having problems. You don't understand. I'm very angry. He only cares about himself and can't see the bigger problem. He knows that the board doesn't communicate well, but won't do anything to fix it. He keeps blaming other people, even though I keep telling him the board is to blame. I'm at a loss. FHOAs. It turned out that the HOA I was on the board of wasn't really an HOA at all. The officers took over a potluck club and turned it into a government. I found out they were lying, confronted them, and told them they should talk to a lawyer about how to move forward in the right way. They added the word voluntary to the letters and notices they send about payments. The president quietly quit, I think after getting advice from a lawyer to do so. He or she is now the treasurer. <laughs> There's no proof that the officers are an HOA, but they still act like they are. The board doesn't know what happened and is confused. I gave up. Dues are only $200 a year, which is very low. A large common area, on the other hand, had been ignored by them for many years. I told the new president that I was going to start a project to make the area look better since it was a city park. They said there would be no trouble. I didn't want them to be mad or cause trouble. I started working on a landscaping plan with the parks department, the people who live near the park, and other local groups to get rid of dead shrubs and make a real park project, etc. They got mad and ripped out some plants. They took the areas we had prepared and planted shrubs in them to stop us from working. One board member told me that the officers are starting a campaign to make me look bad by blaming me for not doing my job in the past and telling me to stop by putting over our work. I'm so angry and upset. Before I joined the board, I was volunteering with a local nonprofit and was asked to join a merchant association. I also told the other five or six neighborhood groups about the idea that they should try to get together and maybe work on projects together in the future. The HOA president was very angry and told the nonprofit that I was posing as a member of their HOA. I had served on their HOA board for a long time. By lying about me, spreading rumors about me, and yelling at me, he really pushed me out of this. I changed my mind and went on with my plans. This is too much for me to handle. 
the police can figure out what I'm doing like when I play whack-a-mole. Don't let it bother you. Crush it. I always try to put out these fires of slander and gossip. The heck am I talking about? There's nothing left for me to do as a volunteer, so I guess that's it. So sad that we could have made the neighborhood so much better, but instead there's trouble. Having a lot of thoughts about this, and I don't want to give up on the park. My HOA gave me permission to make changes to a vacation home I own. The detailed plans were sent to the board to be approved. They were looked over by the HOA's lawyer, who then made a consent by the HOA document. The HOA board approved it, and the president and I signed it. After that, I went ahead with the renovations. After the renovations were done, the HOA fined me a few thousand dollars and told me to take back some of the work that it said it had approved. The signed consent showed that the HOA agreed with them. The lawyer for the HOA said that the HOA would tear down the renovations if they weren't stopped. The HOA lawyer said the renovations were not approved, even though the plan that the HOA lawyer made said it was okay. It was made clear by the HOA board that they had not meant to approve them and would not follow through with the agreement. Because of this, I sued the HOA for lying and breaking the contract. The HOA agreed to a settlement, paid my lawyer's fees, got rid of the fines, and had me sign a new agreement. This took a long time and cost a lot of money. The way the HOA works is really gross, which is why I chose to make a change. When I talked to my lawyer, he suggested a coup. First, I talked to my neighbors. I told them my story and asked if they had ever dealt with the HOA in a similar way. Also, I turned them against the HOA, which may be mean. It had a long time, but it was worth it. We did something at one of the meetings. We wanted the current HOA board to be thrown out and the lawyer to be fired. We reached our goal because there were a record number of owners. They quit and the lawyer was fired. Great, I like the new board a lot more. They're still looking for a new lawyer, but I believe he'll be better than the last one. If you want to watch the part four, click the link here. We're very, very glad to see you all in the comments. Many, many thanks for your support.